Hello friends and happy autumn. Today I want us to live our best flannel wares, spiced apple cider drinking lives, and make this here pumpkin pillow. Oh, she's so cute. I am so excited that I am salivating. Or perhaps I'm just hungry. You'll need one skein each of Burnett Blanket Yarn in the colors of Vintage White and Misty Green. I used about 1.5 ounces of Misty Green, so really not all that much. You'll also need an 8 millimeter crochet hook and a darning needle and some scissors and about 11 ounces of stuffing like polyfill. I had buffalo snow left over from a previous project that you may have seen, the floor poof, so I just used that. All right, to start off, we are going to take our white yarn, make a slip knot, and then we're going to chain 31. That is 30 chains plus one chain for a turning chain. All right, so now once we have our 31 chains and our second chain from our hook, we're going to insert our hook and single crochet. Now single crochet into every chain across. You'll have a total of 30 single crochets when you're done. Once you reach the end of the row, chain one, turn your work. And for row two, we're going to single crochet into the same stitch we came out of, and then into the next four stitches. So we're gonna have a total of five single crochets to start off row two. Now in the sixth stitch right here, we're going to work a bobble stitch. If you need help with the bobble stitch, pop over to my other tutorial. I show you how to do that. This video is pretty long already, so I kind of didn't go slowly with this, but you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, and you're going to pull through the first two loops on your hook. And you're gonna do that until you have a total of five loops on your hook, just like this. Then yarn over, pull through, and that's a bobble. Then in the next stitch, you're going to insert your hook and single crochet. Now you're going to single crochet into the next two stitches. So it'll be bobble, three single crochets, and then you're going to work a bobble again. So yarn over, insert, pull through two, yarn over, insert, pull through two. Do that a total of five times and you'll have six loops on your hook total. Then pull all the way through, single crochet in the next stitch, and then single crochet in the next two stitches. And then repeat again, you're going to bobble stitch. All right, and insert your hook last time pull through. You're going to create a total of four bobble stitches with three single crochets in between. So I've made three bobble stitches and now I'm making my fourth bobble stitch. Almost done. Here we go. Pull through. And now I'm going to single crochet until the end of my row. Still going to have a total of 30 stitches total. You can see one, two, three, four bobbles and they stick out nice and far with this big chunky yarn. It looks so cute. Okay, just single crochet all the way to the end of the row. All right, and here is what row two looks like. You can see we have our four bobble stitches. They look so cute with three single crochets in between. So now at the end of row two, I have chained one, turned my work, and we're going to single crochet all the way across. Again, we're gonna have a total of 30 single crochet. This just gets us back to the same starting point so we can do another row of bobbles on the other end, but you gotta reset like a typewriter. All right, when you've reached the end of your single crochet row three, chain one and single crochet, single crochet again. And you're gonna start off row four with a total of seven single crochets in the beginning. All 
I'll write last one. Then after you make your seven single crochets, you're going to bobble stitch in the next stitch. And five, there we go. And now just like in row two, you're going to single crochet and then single crochet two more times. So it will be bobble stitch, total of three single crochet in between and bobble stitch again. All right, made that bobble. Now single crochet in the next three stitches. In row four, you're going to have a total of three bobble stitches. There we go, made two so far. I'm on my last bobble. And then after you make your third bobble stitch, you're going to single crochet until the end of the row. Again, you'll still have a total of 30 stitches. And then once you reach the end of your row, just like with the others, you will chain one. And now this is going to be another single crochet row. It's a reset row. So we're just going to do a single crochet into every stitch for a total of 30 single crochets in row five. And that's actually going to be the pattern repeat. So you're going to repeat rows two through five, 10 more times. But now you certainly don't need to watch me do that. Boop. So we're going to skip ahead. Oh, look how cute. I finished my base. We have 11 total repeats of that pattern, 10 after the ones that we did together. And it looks adorable. Surprise, it's me. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Turns out only about 20% um, of people are actually subscribed to my channel that watch my videos. So that feels really uh, cool. So uh, let's go make a pumpkin pillow. Love you, bye. All right, so now that we have finished the base, I'm just going to weave in all of the ends that I have so it's nice and clean. And we're going to be left with this. So I'm going to turn it inside out and flip it over so the two short sides are lined up. Now I'm just going to take a length of yarn, my darning needle, and sew back and forth to join the two short ends together. Now you can go back over this twice, which I have done to make it a little bit more secure, especially since we're going to be stuffing it and the seam is going to have a lot of pressure on it. But you know, it's not going to need as much uh, care as say like the floor poofs that we made together, but you know, live your best life. I also don't mind having this visible seam. I think it looks cute. So then I'm just going to cut my yarn, weave in ends or tie them off, tuck them inside because, you know, hide your crimes, darlings. Let's not work harder than we have to. Now we're going to cinch together and sew up one of the ends of this tube that we've made. So I'm taking a long length of yarn and my darning needle, and I'm just weaving in and out of some of the stitches of the end of, again, this tube that we've just made. So once I've gone in and out of a couple, I'm just going to start cinching it together to start bringing it in. So I'll just do in and out of a couple stitches, then cinch together, weave in and out of a couple stitches, cinch together. And I find it works better to do it in small segments like this. And really only takes a couple minutes. So yes, we're gonna really cinch that hole so it's much, much smaller, and then just keep sewing until it is completely closed up. And then you're gonna have like a bag as opposed to a tube. 
All right, so now we've got this like bag thing here and now it is time to stuff it full of stuffing. Like I said before, I am using Buffalo Snow. This is leftover from another project. Use whatever you have, but you really do want to overstuff it. That is like my, my favorite thing ever. So I'm just jamming this full of stuffing. Then once it's filled with stuffing, again, I'm taking a long length of yarn and my darning needle and I'm weaving in and out just like we did on the other end. So I'm gonna weave in and out of a few and cinch it closed, weave in and out of a few, cinch it closed, and just keep sewing until it's securely closed. Then I'm just gonna cut my yarn, tie off my ends, shove them inside in between some of the stitches. Now for the next part, take a long length of yarn and your darning needle and sew directly down through the middle of the pumpkin, leaving the end of the yarn hanging out the side where you started. Once you get all the way through the other side, turn your needle around and sew back up through the middle and then pull on the yarn. This is gonna allow you to cinch the middle of the pumpkin, then just tie it off, tuck your yarn in, and this is what the base is going to look like. Now, every pumpkin needs a stem, so we're gonna take our green yarn and make a magic circle. This is a little bit tough with chunky yarn, but also if you need help with a magic circle, pop over to my other tutorial. All right, so make a magic circle, and then chain one then single crochet into the middle of the magic circle. So you have one single crochet and I like to mark that with a stitch marker because working the round gets tricky. Then you're going to single crochet into the magic circle nine more times. So you're going to make a total of 10 single crochets into your magic circle. Once you have made 10 single crochets into the magic circle, pull on the tail so everything gets all nice and tight and closed up, and then slip stitch the end to the beginning, then chain one to start round two. Round two is going to be pretty much the same as round one, I'm going to single crochet into where I just came out of, and then I'm going to single crochet into every stitch around. Now I do like to mark the beginning, the first stitch I've made in round two with a stitch marker, because again, working in the round gets a little tricky, but yes, just single crochet into every stitch around, so you'll have a total of 10 single crochets in round two. Once you have finished round two, Join the end to the beginning with a slip stitch and then chain one and then start round three the exact same way. Single crochet into the stitch you just came out of, mark your stitch and just single crochet around in 10 single crochets. Now you can choose to have as many rounds as you want for a stem that's as long as you want. I really only did about, I think like five or six rounds. So it was a pretty short stem, but you know, if you want something longer or shorter, just eyeball it and you know, decide how long you want the stem. All right, so here's what my final stem looks like. I think I've done about five rounds and I really like the texture when you flip it inside out. So I'm choosing to do that. Now I'm pulling out a length of about 12 inches or so, cutting my yarn and the magic circle end I'm tucking inside the stem. And then I'm actually using some scrap yarn as stuffing. Now to attach it, I'm going to take my darning needle and that long end of about 12 inches that I pulled out. I'm just going to sew it into the middle of the pumpkin base. Now just remember to attach it to the end where the bobbles sit closest to the top. Right, so just uh, weave in and out and be sure to go through the base of the stem and then pick up some of the pumpkin base and try to keep it as centered as possible. It's okay if it's not perfect because you know what, I'm not perfect either, everything's fine. And then once you've sewn all the way around and you have a little bit of an end left over, I chose to just shove that inside. All right, now to make the tendrils to make these super magical, start off with a slip knot and you can chain either 15, 25, or 35. I made a 25 chain 
a tendril and I think that length looks really cute. So once you chain 25 in your second chain from your hook, just insert your hook and single crochet. And now you're gonna single crochet into that same stitch two more times. And you're gonna repeat this for every chain across. Every single chain is going to get three single crochets worked into it. And that's gonna give it a really nice tight spiral. And that's it, you're just going to work one row across three single crochets into each chain, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And really, you can choose to make these however long you want. I just went with those increments of 15, 25, or 35, and I thought they, you know, look pretty nice, but 25, I think, is really more of like the magic number. All right, after you work three single crochets into each chain, you'll get something that looks like this. Pull out a long length, again, of about 12 inches. You're gonna use this to sew it onto the pumpkin. I like to tie off my end and my beginning together because reasons, and I'm going to just thread my darning needle with one of those ends, the longest end, and use that to stitch it onto my pumpkin right at the base of the stem. I'm just gonna go in and out and loop it through my tendril as well. There's really no wrong way to do this. There we go, it can be a little tricky to get through some, but you got it, just use your instincts. It's, it, it, you really can't mess this up. And then because we can't break with the theme of this project, just shove the ends into the pumpkin. I chose to just kind of push them into the stem. Now make as many tendrils as you want. I chose to make two, a 25 chain and a 15 chain, and look how precious they are. Uh, but this pumpkin is absolutely adorable. I'm losing my mind over it. I love it to death. Oh my gosh. It's just absolute pumpkin perfection. This is everything. And oh my gosh, it's so squishy. I'm screaming. I hope you all enjoyed making this pumpkin pillow. If you post anything to Instagram or TikTok, please tag me so I can see your makes. I love it when that happens. Until we meet again, please stay safe wash your hands, and happy crocheting.